Uh, yeah, I work over at Jimmy's Barber Garage on J and 24th in, uh, old, well, in downtown Sacramento, Midtown area. Nice. What, uh, what, what do you, what's your, like, favorite cut to give? What's your specialty? Uh, I'm, like, more, I do a lot of mullets. I don't <laughs> like. This video is brought to you by Stand Up To Cancer. We'll hear more about them later. For now, let's get on to today's video. Welcome to Room 6, the channel dedicated to the local and not so local music scene and the people that make it. I'm Josh, and today my guest is frontman for a Sacramento-based metal and deathcore band. They're currently on Faith Development Records and their new release, Victims, released just on March 3rd, which at the time of recording was two days ago. Please welcome to the channel, Greg Molina from A Moment's Notice. Hi, Greg. Hey, what's up, dude? How's it going? Oh, just living this thing called life. Feels. <laughs> I'm right there with you. Right on. So, real quick, I just want to say, number one, thank you for coming on the channel. I appreciate you. Um, how is, yeah. uh, how's the weather in Sacramento right now? Uh, I mean, it's it's sunny right now, but it has been changing so all over the place lately. It is one second it's raining, and the next minute it's sleet, and then... It kind of snowed for a second, and same yeah. out here in Vegas. Thanks, global warming. Yeah, it's it, we have no idea what's going on. Yeah, we're very confused. <laughs> yeah, it's like wear wear a, a, a flannel tied around your waist, bring a jacket, bring a hat, you know, all those things just in case. So, well, oh yeah. Um, like I said at the intro, Greg is actually part of a, a band I met. Actually, I didn't say it in the intro, but I, he's part of a moment's notice a band that I met at Eagles Airy Hall, which I am going to be posting a review of soon. Um, and I, it, it, it turned out to be a really cool show. But when you go into it, you're like, it's kind of like you're at a, it's a fraternal order of Eagles meeting hall. It's kind of weird, like a basement show feel to it. But it, it was really cool. I mean, I enjoyed it. Anyway. Yeah, yeah. It kind of threw me for a loop when we got there. I was like, huh? Yeah. The Marquis <laughs> says like, Super Bowl party or whatever. Yeah, I was uh, I was like a little confused. I was like, "What are we doing?" Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's definitely one of those you have to know where it is kind of places, and you have to know about it. Oh yeah, you'll totally pass it. But you will not. I almost there. did. Yeah, like uh, that was my first time there. Um, that was the last stop on the tour. They were with Travelers. They were with uh, Travelers. Had had literally I had inter interviewed them that day before the show. So I was like, "Well, I, I guess right. I'll go to the show. Let's check it out." Um, uh, yeah, uh, memoir and um, who else? On that bill everglade everglade um uh silent speaks silent speaks were they the ones that said like turn the lights off yeah yeah they, they yeah they, they thanks for that because it went i was you know trying to take photos and videos and suddenly it's just dark yeah they got very heavy very quick and yeah. i was like yeah man um and then uh memoir came on with their own lighting show and it was like too much light <laughs> yeah yeah i i didn't I mean, we didn't bring any lights. We didn't know that we could or couldn't. Um, right. We just kind of were playing it by ear, but we're like a fairly newer band, so we didn't really like... This was kind of like our test run for us. Right. And honestly, I mean, going on tour is a, is a nice test run for any any band um, in terms of just the relationship between band members. You, you, meeting for rehearsals is way different than traveling. You know. Yeah. Yeah, like touring touring can be really stressful at times but um you know for my guys it seemed like we were we were all getting along we were all laughing like we had it we enjoyed it, like what we were doing so like it didn't really it wasn't really a bad time for us nice um and incidentally if you're watching this and you want to be interviewed or just having you review your stuff hit me up using my email address that's down in the description it's room 6 lv at gmail.com or you can click the Room 6 social media link, and that will tell you all the places I'm at online, as well as some places that you can support the channel if you're interested. I've got merch that I designed myself. This says, did you remember to rock today? Hell yeah. And I got That's other awesome. merch that says, uh, you know, make music, not excuses. All sorts of stuff, you know, all sorts of uh, types of, of things you can wear or use, such as mugs. So, hmm. Nice. Aside from that, the best way that you can support the channel is clicking the affiliate link from the sponsor that I'm going to be talking about here in a, in a little bit. 
um, we'll, we'll be going to a sponsor spot. I hate doing them, but you know, needs must. So that's the best way yeah. you can support the channel. Um, and, and stick, stay tuned. We'll, we'll be, uh, we'll be going, hearing from, uh, from some, somebody in the future here. Real quick question for you, Greg. Any plans for one wheeled haircuts coming up? <laughs> no, 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 no. Combine those two, uh, two passions. <laughs> You know, um, it kind of sucks, actually. Like, a month before the tour, my one wheel actually got stolen. So, oh, man. Um, yeah, I worked really hard to get that thing. Um, a few friends, like, helped out with it, and I ended up getting it, and I had so much fun. But when it got stolen, I was just like, yeah, I'm not getting another one anytime in the near future. They're, they're just too expensive. Yeah, they're not cheap. No. Don't get me wrong, I, I would gladly spend the money all over again because of how much enjoyment they bring me, but I just realized, I'm like, yeah, I'll just, I'll just do what I usually do. Right. And I work in downtown Sacramento, so like most of the time I'm walking around anyways. So yeah. now I have an excuse to actually get steps in rather than riding somewhere. Get those steps, that's right. Um, having lived in Old Town Sacramento for a little bit, and uh, I actually met my wife in Davis, uh, we... And we moved uh, to Vegas from uh, Walnut Creek. So having been in oh, that cool. whole area, I know the one wheel can be useful, but most of the time it's just dangerous down in... I mean, yeah, there's a certain level of, like, um, I guess you could say, like, caution that it comes with right. when you ride around. Like, the only, time I see you, the only time I see one wheels in use on, like, uh, on YouTube, they're, in the, they're out in the woods or, or they're, you know, on an abandoned street or something. So, oh yeah. So there's a guy that uh, rides by my work, but he's usually hauling, and he just flies by, and I'm like, "Holy crap!" Like, see you in the emergency. And he's like, he's riding like very fast, like right. unsafe fast. See you in the ER, buddy. Going, yeah. Well, there are, like, there dude. are there are lots of people that are, and, and I admit when I was younger, there are lots of people that are um, in a hurry to their own funeral, as my mom used to say. <laughs> I mean, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Some people are like that yeah. for sure. For those of you that don't know, I, I mentioned one wheeled haircuts because uh, he's a barber as well, right? Yeah. You want to give a shout out to your bar where you work? Uh, yeah, I work over at Jimmy's Barber Garage on J and Twenty Fourth in uh, old, well, in downtown Sacramento, Midtown area. Nice. What uh, what what do you? What's your like favorite cut to give? What's your specialty? Uh, I'm like more. I do a lot of mullets. <laughs> I, I mean, I have I have a very grown out mullet, basically, and um, I mean it's metal, so you know. It yeah, it's called like a shag or like a wolf cut. I don't know TikTok reverse changes fade the name. <laughs> the yeah, the TikTok changes names so frequently that you kind of have to just sit there and be like, I don't know what the hell this thing is called. This is what it was called when I started doing it, and so right. And you're like, and then some kids like that's like half your age is like. It's called a one-two fade cut, and you're like, "Okay." You mean okay? <laughs> you just half the time you don't know what to say. Yeah, right. So, um, one thing I find interesting is that uh, the more things change, the more they stay the same, like the song says. And yeah, especially with TikTok. I mean, I'm on TikTok. You know, at Room Six LV, you can see all the every single video I put out. There's a little like what less than one minute promo clip of it basically oh cool and yeah uh, i love this yeah i mean you know promote or die so i am constantly surprised at how similar all the new music a lot of musicians are out there they're putting out a lot of stuff that it's great i love it but it's like but it sounds like 10 other people because all music is thievery yeah you know? i mean there's definitely a way you have to stand out like whether it be the uniqueness of your own like vocal style or something, or just the way that you incorporate music, you have to, you have to kind of stand out a little bit. And I feel like that's like one thing that my band does a lot that we don't really sound like a lot of other people. Definitely. And, um, one, I mean, especially in a metal, like metal is there's so many subgenres, but at, the, at, at, at its root, it's all the same, uh, you know, elements, <clears throat> so I find that the bands for me that stand out are the ones that bring the energy on. It, it, there's something about their stage, their live show, or there's something about like their commitment to the bit, so to speak, where they're like, okay, 
this is the core thing about us. And we're going to keep sticking like, like, you know, Judas priest. Judas priest. Yeah. You know, you had Eddie and you had all the Egyptian myth stuff where if they suddenly came out with a country album or, or they came out with, you know, new metal or something, you'd be like, what the hell? <laughs> right. You know, but, um, Hey, so I wanted to ask you uh, kind of a, a more usual interview question, and I apologize in advance. <laughs> so, <laughs> no, you're good. Every we all we all hate getting this question. How would you define your band's musical style? Elevator pitch, go. Um. All right. So our musical style. I, I mean, we started off very metalcore. Right. Um. But as time kind of progressed, we started going a lot more into what I like to play. And what some of the other guys, like, their roots were, which was hardcore. And um, I've always be been more of a deathcore vocalist. I've never been really a metalcore vocalist. or And there's, there's like you said, subgenres. It's very different. Um, the best way to explain our music is... I would say it's more like a blend of, like, the old nostalgia hardcore. But with a lot of the... the 2009 to 15 deathcore kind of style with the new age stuff as well it's like we're taking we're taking pieces of each part of uh the generations of this style and finding a way to make it current and make it blend and sound sound good right on that's uh i think that's a pretty good definition of your music having heard it i um i wanted to ask you kind of a personal question if you don't mind Sure. What was the 2009 missed opportunity? Man, <laughs> that missed opportunity. Um, I can't really say the names, but there was somebody that was really interested in what I was doing. Um, fast forward, you know, two years later, I'm actually, I still never met the guy. But um, his partner is the owner of our label. Oh, Right on. So it kind of, kind of came full circle because I didn't realize that until about a month ago, um, and then realized who was who and talking, and then I was like, I've never met the guy, and I was like, but I know he knows who I am, and he, he goes, yeah, yeah, he does. He still remembers you from oh nine. Oh nine, I should have been signed. We, we were gonna go somewhere, but um, I just made poor life choices as a young adult. And I, I had a lot of maturing on my own that I had to do. Take a number, man. Take a number. Yeah. Yeah, I had to take that take that right on the chin, man. I, I, yeah. I knew what I got myself into. And I've, I've, got, I've got a handful of those myself where you're just like, if only or what if. But you can't you know, dwell on it or it's going to drive you nuts. Yeah, you just got to kind of realize like you're like, I did what I did. Um, and I have to grow from that. And I made the choices I made. And those directly impacted how I make today. There you so. go. Yep, learn from your mistakes. You new musicians, you're going to make so many mistakes along your your career path, and all you can do is learn from them and and move on, and and try to remember. You know, when when the alarm bells ring in the back of your head, that that's the past talking to you and be like, hey, stupid, remember this? Right. Shoot. Yeah. Speaking of the past. As military bantamweight champ, are you still uh, boxing at all? <laughs> nope. No, I'm not, not fighting, fighting anymore. Um, man, you, you really did, did do your research. research. You're, 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 you're diving, diving real deep. There's some things that people don't even know about me. I have been called the next Nardwar. <laughs> hey, man, you're doing <laughs> great. <laughs> um, I just don't, I don't ambush people in their dressing room, that's all. <laughs> well, there you go. That probably, probably helps out a lot. Um, yeah, I don't fight. Mostly because uh, when I got out of the military, I I had a lot of, like, anger. I had a lot of, um, I was pissed that I got out. I, I didn't like the fact that I got out under the conditions I did, and I worked really hard to get there. And, um, and I realized after a lot of therapy and stuff on my own that I needed to be as calm as possible and be as zen as possible and uh i just never wanted to like get in the position to where i could be potentially angered like i like, had to have that much anger in me and you know something goes awry and i go and 
you know, want, I want to fight again. I want to do this. And my body's already beat to crap. I don't need to do any more to it. Yeah, it's amazing how Zen you can get the more you the more you learn how to be dangerous, the more you realize how dangerous you are. And 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 hopefully hopefully the majority of people are like, oh, yeah, maybe I need to not be so aggro or be be not so uh, put up put myself in positions where I can hurt other people. Cause it all Right. I I think that there's um I had talking to a friend once and he had told me, he's like, I'm not afraid of the guy that's the loudest in the room and the guy that's swinging around. He goes, it's the guy that's the quiet one that's in the corner, not saying a single word. The guy who asks you, please, please don't do this. Right. Yeah. He goes, that's the guy. He's like, that's the guy I'm afraid of. Yep. He's like, I'm not afraid of the guy that's flailing around like a chimpanzee. You're like, (laughs) you're not, you're not, you're not terrifying, buddy. Yeah, right. I mean, I'm all for, like, I studied martial arts when I was younger, and I got to that certain level of, okay, I just accidentally hurt my friend because we were messing around. Maybe I need to, you know, right. reevaluate. And, and um, but I, I always, I, I'm with you. Like, don't, you know, the louder you are, the less people will listen. Yeah, I, I do, I choose to, when people say, like, oh, well, we got Greg, we, like, if something goes down, like, and I'm like, oh great, you're the you're alpha. on your own. <laughs> I'm like, you're on your own because I'm not, I'm not getting in a fight. Right. Now that being and said, they're like, I mean, you never know how you're like, why? Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't, I don't put myself in the position to anymore, just because I'm like, I know what I'm capable of doing. Right. Um, I mean, I fought for a very long time. A lot of people don't know that about me, so usually that's like the kind of the ace in the back pocket for me is people don't know I can fight. Right. So same, like, look, you look at me and I'm 50 now. So you, you wouldn't know to like, Oh, he used to really, Oh, it's amazing. I'm not in prison kind of quite frankly, but we won't go. We're, we're getting off the subject. Music, music. I mean, but you did see me. <laughs> you did see me at the, at the venue. I'm, I'm not a tall dude. No, no, I'm not a big guy. But yeah. I mean, Whereas I'm just under six two, so I'm taller than a lot of people, and uh, yeah. I'm aware of it. And and it's <laughs> it's weird, but we're getting we but we digress. <laughs> yeah. Speaking of um, speaking of being loud and losing control a little bit, you still go hard at TJ Maxx. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, you're good. Um, <laughs> so we were acting like a bunch of idiots at TJ Maxx. I mean, why not? I used to all the time. Actually, yeah. Um, no, I haven't done that in a while. <laughs> I I used to joke around a lot at TJ Maxx, uh, or like Barnes and Noble, or just places like that. Like my friends and I would we just go and go get stuff, and as my friends would say, uh. Can't take this guy anywhere because <laughs> yeah, I'm always that was me. <laughs> I mean, I just posted a reel of the tour and it was just me fucking with everyone. Nice. <laughs> like, that's just me. Like I, I joke around a little bit too much sometimes. Sometimes I just don't take anything seriously because I'm like I've taken life so seriously sometimes, so like so much to the point where it's like I like suck the fun out of a room. So I'm like. Sometimes I just try to just be as goofy and in a way moronic because I'm just like, I don't, I don't care. I don't care. Look at me. Yeah. Great. Awesome. Um, real quick, before we move on to uh, some of my more usual interview questions, we're going to hear a quick message from future Josh. And uh, I think we're going to have a booze break. I don't know about you. I'm almost empty. Booze break. And now a word from our sponsors. Thanks, Josh, from the past. Generally, I'm an easygoing guy with love for most people and things. But you know what I really hate? Fucking cancer. Like many of you, it's affected my family too, and it really needs to go. In fact, there will be 5,200 people diagnosed with cancer today alone. That's why I'm partnering with Stand Up To Cancer. Stand Up To Cancer funds and develops the newest and most promising cancer treatments to help patients today. They dramatically accelerate the rate of new discoveries by connecting top scientists in unprecedented collaborations to create breakthroughs. Their innovations lead to better cancer prevention, diagnoses, and treatment, which means that we can help save lives now. 
They're committed to funding ambitious and robust research and awareness efforts focused on incorporating health equity in cancer care for the benefit of all patients facing cancer. The best part, 100% of your donations support Stand Up to Cancer and its collaborative cancer research programs. Just for watching this video, and for being part of Room 6, and for a limited time, you can use my affiliate link down in the description to get 10% off your first order when you sign up for email. Plus, you'll be helping out the channel and the cancer fight. Thanks to Stand Up for Cancer for being a sponsor, and let's get back to the show. We're back, and we're going to move on to a couple more usual questions. I'm done with my, my, my Sean Evans Hot Ones deep dive questions. There's a guy with a serious research team, Sean Evans from Hot Ones. Dude, uh, yeah, he, he, he gets gets people good. They're like, holy crap, I did not expect you to know no. anything about That's when, like, it's a, it, it fills me with this ridiculous amount of joy when someone's like, how did you know that? And I'm like, you posted it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's just the, the TJ Maxx thing. I'm like, holy shit, <laughs> nobody, nobody actually brings that up. That's what I do, man. That's what I do. <laughs> and, and, I mean, I... I the, the reason this is a long form interview is because I hate, I've been interviewed and I've seen lots of interviews where it's literally, you're sitting in a chair, I'm sitting in a chair, I ask you five questions and, and we're done. And, and I hate that. Uh, like, that's why, I, what do you do when you go to someone's house? You hang out in the kitchen and you drink their booze. That's why the interviews are downstairs in my kitchen to hang out and chill. Coming up here to perform, that's why a lot of musicians are here. But, right. you know, I mean, I, I want it to be fun and memorable. So, moving on. Gregory Molina. Let's talk earliest musical influence. I normally start with this question, but I, I wanted to get some of those deep dive ones out of the way. Uh, I want to talk, what is that first memory you have of, I want to do that when it comes to music, whether it's a particular song or an artist or you saw a music video or whatever? Um, Man, it was... And I actually just got done doing a podcast earlier this week about it too. And um, oh, which one? If I may ask, uh, it's my one of my friend Sean's. Like his friend does a podcast. I gotta see. I can't remember the name. I think it's like Alchemy something. I can't remember it off the top of my head. But I did post about it and stuff like that. Right it was really cool. Um, but it's it's funny because when people ask me this question, and I'm like, I remember the day, like the most people do. <laughs> And, uh, I mean, it was, I was 15 years old, and as Blood Runs Black had just dropped Allegiance, Bone of Osiris had the new reign out, the Warriors were, were getting bigger, and, um, Walls of Jericho was, was a thing still, and, uh, that was, like, my friend literally was like, hey, like, they introduced me about a week before this to this band, and I've never heard as Blood Runs Black, never listened to Deathcore. Um, I got into it from that, and she was like, for my birthday, my parents are taking us all to, to go to the show. Do you want to go? And I was like, well, sure, why not? Yeah. And so I went. And uh, I remember I was watching the Warriors. I was watching Walls of Jericho. I was like, dude, this is sick. This is cool. And then I watched Bone of Osiris get on stage. And they played uh, Brace Legs. And Brace Legs ended. And then all of a sudden, the drummer, Cameron, just goes, da -da -da. and then the vocalist says, fucking bow down. And I was like, wow. <laughs> like, Power. <laughs> I, I was like, and they went right into bow down. And like then I heard that from their MySpace the day after. And I was like, I don't, I want to do with that. I don't want to do that. Like whatever that was, that shit was cool as fuck. I couldn't, I couldn't say no to it. I was like, damn, I want to do that hell of a Being a front man is such an addictive drug. I, I, I've done it. And when you get response from a crowd, you're just like, I have the power. This is amazing. Oh yeah. Oh God. We had a situation like that happen in, um, Seattle on the tour we have a song called offerings and there's like a split second pause in my vocals to the next line and we hit this my just this nasty guttural and as soon as it ended we heard somebody at the back of the bar like that was pretty far away we just hear 
oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, I was like, no fucking way. That's awesome. <laughs> I, I thought it was the coolest thing in the world. I was like, that was that was so sick. That, like, that sign awesome. me up. Let's let's do that again. Uh, I've talked about it before on this channel, but one of my favorite show memories, uh, and is, is, is that sounds like it was a really good show memory of yours. One of my favorite show memories is playing House of Blues here in Vegas, and it was the first time, and it was first time playing like a real show. You got a sound guy out there, you got a sound guy off on off backstage, so you can hear everything. It was amazing. You hear everything on stage. Crowd can hear everything. It was great. It was my my wife. My one of it was one of the very few times my wife had ever seen me perform original. And, uh, you know, because, of course, she's going to show up to House of Blues. She brought some friends. Right. She brought some friends who had never seen me before. And it was awesome. And, you know, this was an indie rock band I was in called The Suspense. About that moment you were just talking about where right before the, the wave crashes down, right before you step on the distortion box or whatever. I love right. that moment. That moment when, yeah. when you're all tight and you're just like. <laughs> but um, when we were done with our set, kid in the row, front row, says, hey, can I get your pick? And I'm like. Yeah, man. I mean, I'm not that good, but okay. I gave him a pick, and I was telling uh, the guitarist for the next act uh, later about it. He's like, oh, yeah, he did the same thing to me. It's like, man. <laughs> He's just hedging his bets. He's just like, you want to get famous? I want your pick. <laughs> I mean, hey, like, I mean, regardless if, like, they do it or not, like, the still, I think it gets super cool. Like, I mean, I, I, we have a fan out here that she shows up to every single one of our shows, and she got her like our emblem tattooed on her already and everything. And wow, I was like, that's that's. And I was story. like, holy crap! And she loves to tell me about it every time she sees me. She's like, <laughs> oh, I did tat, and I'm like, yeah, I know. I'm like, yeah, I know. You should just put her on the guest list permanently. Yeah, I, I, at this point, I, I might as well. But I just, I can't yeah. like. It feels weird to me because, like, I just haven't, I didn't expect that when joining, like, when right. starting the band. Like, I just didn't think it was going to get to that level. And now we see tattoos and, or I'll, I'll watch somebody's story on their Instagram and somebody's wearing our merch in the background. And I'm like, oh, shit. Like, yeah. I didn't even know he listened to us. I forgot I sold, I forgot that somebody had bought a hat from me. And I went on his podcast, or his, he, he, he uh, runs a radio station here, a uh, show. Uh, Josh Coots, he he actually owns a record label called Mixed Tape Records, and he works at uh, the the University of UNLV. Um, they have a, a every Saturday Sunday night they have um, a show called Rock Avenue where he has people on about the local music scene or you know a lot of musicians, and he'll play music from local bands and stuff. That's really cool. And I forgot he, I, I show up and he's wearing one of my hats. I'm like, oh oh yeah. That's a thing. I forget. Right. I forget yeah. sometimes I'm wearing my own merch, and it's really it was really cool. Uh, so moving on. So we talked about that. We talked about you know favorite show memories. What is your now? Have you been to Vegas more than that one time? Uh yeah, I've been to Vegas a few times. Nothing like really too crazy. I've never been there long enough to say like I'm like. So you don't have a favorite yep. Vegas venue to play or, or to see music in. No, I think I've literally played a different place every single time, oh. and it's been so spread out that, like, I don't remember anything from when I was first doing music, but then we played a uh, Soul Belly Barbecue. Yes, you did, and I I, I, oh, I wanted to go to that show. Um, Soul Belly Barbecue is really cool. Uh, sorry, shameless plug here. Every third Sunday, there's a songwriter showcase where it's it's, you know, mostly acoustic, but they have bands there as well, and rappers. But it's, it's a songwriter showcase hosted by a guy here named Hal Savar. And he's a huge proponent of the local music scene, the original local music scene. And uh, I live stream it on the channel. And, oh, cool. and, and I also do a review video of it. And, uh, and then I also talk to the musicians about you know interviews. I'm a lot of people's first interview, quite frankly. So, and, and, nice. You know, I mean, that's good. Yeah. But, you know, these singer songwriters, a lot of them, they, they're, a lot of them are, are just, they're good. But they're, they're still kind of new. To the whole thing yeah and soul belly is an opportunity for them to play a real stage with real lighting and real sound and a sound person and uh, uh and, and play to you know a crowd as opposed to just in a corner of a bar somewhere so um that's why i want to talk about it but anyway you were saying yeah no i went i went out there um uh, because i was running merch and a tm for dwellings who is signed a tragic hero and um went out there with them and 
you know, spent some time playing each show and stuff. It was, it was, it was crazy. Like I had a good time. Um, but that was like my first kind of like getting back into this thing. And then, um, then we played at Eagle and that was cool. And so like, now I'm like, okay, cool. I don't know when the next time I'm going to be in Vegas. I mean, my mom's there literally all the time. Cause we have family out there, but I'm, I'm never there. Right on. <laughs> uh, okay. So I can't ask you your favorite Vegas venue then, but I will say this last question. You made it. Yay. <laughs> Speaking of which, if you're watch, if you're still here, thank you very much. If you don't know who a moment's notice is, thank you very much for watching. Um, stick around. We're going to be seeing, uh, I think, a music video from you. Is that right from your band? Yeah. Yes. So stick around for that, and in, also down in the description will be the social media and all the links for them, so, so you can follow them and find out where they're playing and and you know buy their merch and, and hear their stuff, all that jazz. I wanted to ask you. We're going to circle back to the earliest musical. Uh, influence question this is a question i ask of all my prey uh i want to say what is one thing that you wish someone had told you when you started going down this road called music and don't say change the strings no i know it was never that strings wasn't even a question um hmm. Somebody once told me, and I can't remember exactly what they said, but I got the kind of gist of it. And they said, if you don't know how it's going to work, or you don't know everything about it, ask around before you start posting about it. Because in the music industry, you'll, and what people didn't tell me when I first got in this was, Social media will be the death of you if you don't use it properly. It's a tool. And yep. yeah, and I didn't know even even now I'm still learning like how to like properly use social media to promote my music. Um with like help from like uh Jeff Ming from uh he manages Left to Suffer. His book came out and it was amazing. Um our label, a bunch of other people, like just finding out information. Like nobody tells you that in the beginning, they never tell you social media is a big thing. Watch what you say on it. Also use it as a tool and don't compare yourself to anybody because like, you don't know how much work it takes to get to that one song. Right. And there's so many little things that I wish that I would have been told. Um, but it's kind of one of those things, like, my biggest advice for anybody getting into this industry and in the beginning stages is ask a shit ton of questions. And if something feels like it's wrong to you, ask people that have done it a lot longer than you if it's right or wrong. Because they're usually going to give you the right answer and tell you, hey, man, I've been doing this for a while. That's not how this works. Or I made um, that mistake. You don't want to do that. Yeah, yeah. Don't make that mistake. Um, yeah, that's one thing nobody tells you about when you start your music industry. They, you're just like, you're making music. Good job, honey. Hey, great set. <laughs> yeah, don't don't be that guy. Ask everybody as many questions as humanly possible. That you're like, wow, they're really good and they're local and they're big. Ask them a shit ton of questions. How did they do it? Yeah, and like, you new musicians. What did they, what did they do? New musicians don't be afraid to talk to. Like one thing I've learned doing these interviews because I've had some interviews where I'm like, oh my god, I can't believe it. I can't believe they're coming to play. They're just people. <laughs> they go to you know. Yeah. They still go to the bathroom, look at their, check their hair, or you know, put on the makeup or whatever. They still worry about that first note or that first lyric. You know, it, they they're they're all musicians are so insecure. You think you're the only one. Oh, God, no. Imposter yeah. syndrome is so real. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, I, I, I make I make at least once a month an imposter syndrome post, and I'm like, mm -hmm. yep, uh, imposter syndrome striking again. I see it again. I, I made a video about it. I'm not going to point to it, but uh, uh, there, you can see, find it on my, my channel. I, I A lot of my stuff is geared towards new, new musicians because I made so many mistakes. And every week as a YouTuber who I, I follow and I, you know, I subscribed and, and I, I love content. From, from some big channels where you're looking at, it's so hard not to look at the numbers. It's so hard not to pay attention to the numbers. 
But the important yeah. thing is just don't stop. You got to be like that 75 year old, you know, in the gym who lifts more than you do because he just never stopped. You know? Yeah. Yeah. You got to be the old wrinkly guy who's going to, who can bench press you literally. And, and the, just don't stop. Just don't stop. The biggest advice I'd have to give is like when you, when you're focused on the numbers and you're focused on the numbers, I, I always, and I say this to like my best friend cause he, he's, he gets kind of weird about it sometimes, but I always tell him, I look at the guy that's, that is on the same level as me, but a little bit bigger and I figure out how they're doing it or how they're doing it better than me or how they're getting more popularity from it. And I'm like, okay, I'm going to learn how he did this. And then I'm going to pass him. And then I'm going to look at the next person and the next person. And I'm just going to keep doing that until I get to the very tip top person. And I'm going to be like, cool. I beat them at their home game. And it's not in a way of me being like, oh, like, screw them i don't like them it's more like no i'm in friendly competition with everybody because like i want to like i want to be able to do what you do but i want to do it better right yeah i i i saw a reel that even talked about it and it said all you guys at the top i hope you guys would keep working because i'm coming nice i mean that's the attitude and i was have. like yeah. yeah i was like that's the attitude you have to have like but on the flip side, you also have to remember it's just at the end of the day, it's you versus you. And and the, the guy you gotta oh, really is beat the... is is you yesterday. Yeah. Yeah, you're your biggest demon. Like, oh my god, I can't tell you how many times I've literally sat there and played mind games with myself. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, I don't know, I don't know how I feel about the song, maybe it sucks, like this and that, and I'm like it, what, what I, one thing that helps me is that every year for New Year's for New Year's Eve, I put out the a Room Six uh, gag reel. Kind of, I take all the interviews I've done that year or that season, I say, and I, I take all the like the funny. I, I, at the beginning of this interview, I'm going to put something that made us laugh. But I, I take all the funny bits and I put them together. And man, by the time I'm done, I'm like, I'm actually really good at this. <laughs> and you know, I, I really. There are times you just got to step back and, and look at it objectively, not in the critical way, but in a would I like this? And, and a lot of times it's yes, but yeah, I'm with you. Like it is so hard being a content creator and, and not having um, a hype man, uh, you know, to, to hype you up. You kind of have to be your own. You do. <laughs> like, and the, the thing is like, my, the people that hype me up are the ones who've been on the channel. Like, well, you have a vested interest in hyping this, this video up. Of course you do. Well, but, I, I I don't know if it's for you as well, but like for me, like as oh, when hype froze. people hype me up. Uh, yeah, I free. Say what? It's all right. Like I said, it'll, it'll work out in the in the final thing. Oh yeah, no, I was saying uh, I don't know for you, but um, for me, a big thing is like when people start like I become the center of attention all over again. I'm like, and I kind of clamshell a little bit because I'm like, oh man, I'm not used to that. Like. Even even when I like am on tour and stuff like that, I still have those problems. I, I always found that like I was I, more nervous after I was done performing because then I had to go talk to people about my performance. Yeah, yeah, that part. And yeah, and you can only I, say I, thanks, thanks. You know, so many times when they say oh, you were great, great, you know, good job. When what you want to say is no, I, I fucked up this, I screwed up this, or you know, because you're not going to be the guy who goes, I know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if you're like that and you think that you're really like God's gift to mankind when you get done off that stage, like I'm like, bro, you are in the wrong line of work because I can't tell you how many times I got off that stage and I'm like, fuck. Oh, I messed that up. Most, mo- especially singers. Most of us, there's always that moment live where it's like, hey, you know, where you just you're like, nobody. OK, it's original music. Nobody knows. Nobody knows. This is me. It's right. Me. You're like, Art- please, God, nobody realized that I did that. Two words. Two words. Artistic license. I did. I changed it on purpose. That's what happened. Or, yeah. I mean, you've probably done this thing where you you hold the mic out so they can sing. <laughs> oh, yeah. Because you forgot. <laughs> oh, no, I, I have I have in ears. So we have everything going. We have the whole trick, the whole click going and everything in my ears. So I can hear all of that. Awesome. And in ears are important. I uh, yeah. I wish I had them when I was when I was performing because even if it's just a click, it 
it's so it's such a difference for, especially in metal especially the more technical stuff keeping tight oh yeah i was talking to of sulfur about that they're from vegas um ricky hoover and i were talking about it and we were talking about the fact that we're like you know when we were doing music when ricky had first gotten into this genre and i had gotten into it um it was very different and we didn't have in ears and now that we have them we're like we're never going back like we know what that is like yeah and, and you gotta use them in practice in, in rehearsals too uh, oh yeah yeah so yeah you have you have to have them pretty much on you at all times like you're you're using them okay well i think we've milked this last question enough <laughs> So, right. thank you very much for watching. And Greg, thank you very much for being on the channel. Like I said, hit the description to find out where a moment's notice is playing and, and keep up with all their stuff. And uh, like I said, if, if you want to be on the channel, hit me up using my email address, one click one six social media link. Uh, if that sponsor spot, whatever it was for, interested you, please, please click the link and help out the channel. Uh, all the money goes to things like the uh, Room 6 Rocks showcase I talked about or making better videos. So... Thank you in advance. In the meantime, uh, stick around. We're going to see that music video, whatever song it is. And I think we're going to temporarily say goodbye, sir. Temporarily say goodbye. I want to thank Greg for my moment's notice for coming on the channel. It was a great interview and a great music video. If you want to know more about a moment's notice, check out the links down in the description for their social media. Other than that, if you want to see more videos like this, please click up here. If you'd like to subscribe, click over there. Don't forget to ring the bell. And if you want to hear my own music, click over there. Remember to be amazing, and we'll see you next time on Room 6.